Right then, loading screens. This is what we're going to be looking at today. This is a surprisingly complex topic. So what we're going to do is start with keeping something simple, just with a really nice fading effect. So at the moment you'll find when you load um, into a game, it just suddenly pops in. So we're going to add a nice little fade from black, um, which can just nice um, soften um, the loading of, the, of your scene, just to make it feel a little bit nicer. And you can apply that to all of your cameras in all of your scenes, so it'll always just fade from black if you wanted to. So that's always a nice option. Then we're going to look at adding a separate loading screen, which is quite an advanced topic. So what I recommend with this is don't try and follow along with me. I'm going to explain it. Um, I'm going to show you what I have set up and how it works, and then try and have a go by following along a second time or rewatching it, because there's a bunch of stuff that introduces dependencies. Um, so I'll quickly talk you through the topic, and we'll, we'll come back to that a little bit later. So. To add a separate loading screen, this is advantageous because the player doesn't have to put up with a horrible little Oculus loading screen. So when you're transitioning between scenes normally inside of Oculus, um, there's a pause when you're going between scenes and if you've got a long loading time that pause is really noticeable. You turn your head around but your view doesn't follow with you and it's really horrible and it's, it's really not very good. So adding a loading screen is a very lightweight scene um, and then while that lightweight scene, what I mean by lightweight is it's very easy for the computer to load, loads it in very rapidly and then loads the, the more complex scene in the background so the player's got something to look at. So we're going to create a game manager that persists between scenes. Persist means it doesn't get deleted between scenes. We're going to make a loading screen camera and visuals for, for what they do and how they work. Then we're going to create a loading screen async. I'm going to create a, the scene. Going to make it load asynchronously. What asynchronous means is it doesn't unload the previous scene. It loads on top of the current scene, which is what we're going to do. We're going to have that load a loading screen then inside of the loading screen it's going to load your main game and then once the main game is finished loaded it will unload your loading screen. That's the plan. We're also going to look at some options and issues that this can introduce which is why I wanted to stick through to the end to make sure you're familiar with some of the trade-offs we're going to introduce by what we're doing. So let's talk about loading screens and then we're going to do our fade and then a more complex loading screen. So what we're currently doing with the loading screen is we have a main menu, uh, we press a button which immediately unloads the current scene, which means there's no camera drawing anything. And then it starts loading the game or whatever the additional scene is. It's a completely separate thing. And once it's finished loading, you've got control over it and it works. So let's just see that working so you, you can see what I'm talking about. So currently, if I go to a main menu screen, I've got one preset up. I've got the headset on, and what you can see at the moment is if I just press load game, in headset it's now frozen, I've got a loading screen, I'm looking around it's looking awful, and then the scene has loaded relatively quickly. You'll also hopefully have seen the nice little screen fade which we're going to make in a moment, but what I'm proposing we're going to build that is better is a loading screen that it will transition to, so I'm going to press that, immediately loads into a loading screen tells me that it's loading, it tells me that it's loading, and then when it's finished loading, it loads into the scene, and there we go. So I think that's superior, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. So first things first, that's our basic loading screen. Our more complex loading, well, our more complex loading screen, which we're going to build in a second, has that main menu, which is where we just were, and you could see that it hung between pressing the button. Then we're going to transition to a loading screen that's going to load very, very quickly because it's very lightweight, keeps the player occupied, instructs the scene manager to, to start loading the game, and the game loads inside of the current scene and then unloads when we get there. So to show you what that ultimately means, I'm not going to put the headset on, but I'm just going to show you the difference. If I press load game, keep an eye over here, you see that main menu stays there, stays there, stays there, stays there, stays there. This new scene, which is called show, then loads. We'll talk about this thing, don't destroy and load, in a moment. But if I show you the, the way we're going to actually set it up, which is using this loading screen, watch what happens over here when I press loading screen. You can see that loading screen has loaded. Show, which is the game, is currently loading. And then it's 
show is the, the game, that's, that's loaded up and the main menu and the loading screens have disappeared. I really like that subtle fade, so let me just show you that again in case you missed it. And then just watch as the game loads, if I turn my frame off, notice the little fade from black pops in nicely. So that's the first thing we're going to look at, which is really, really simple. On my game, which is called Show, that's the name of my main, main game, I've got an XR Origin. Now yours could be the XR Origin pre-configured, it could be XR Origin, it doesn't matter, it all follows the same structure. In there is a camera offset, and in there is your main camera. All I've added to this main camera is a canvas. So I did that by right-clicking on main camera, going to XR, not UI, XR, and I chose a UI canvas. reason why you've got to do UI canvas through XR is it sets a world space camera, which is what we want. Now, this canvas, I've then scaled down and scaled down and scaled down and scaled down, so it's really, really small. In the case, it's like 0 0.03 of its original scale. And notice that when I use the scale tool, I scale it uniformly in the middle. If you stretch it this way or this way, if you put any text on there later, if that's the thing you want to do, you'd also stretch the text. All I've then put on the canvas is a child, which is a panel. Again, right click on the canvas. Now you can go to UI and choose panel. On that panel, all I've then done is change the source color to black with an alpha of all the way up, which is 255. That's all that is. And because um, this is um, slaved to the camera, it completely fields that view. And I've just then taken the camera, or the canvas, sorry, reset its uh, X, Y, Z to 0, 0, 0, so it's right where the camera is. If I look through the eyes of the camera, I can't see it, but then if I move it forward ever so slightly, you can see it's right in front of the camera's, camera's eyes, which is what we're doing there. It's effectively just a big billboard in front of the camera's eyes. Then what I've done is I've gone to the canvas, opened my animation panel, which you can get to through window, animation and animation and animator we kind of want both of them open and then all i've done here is with animation switched on i've gone to a point in my case two seconds then i've clicked on the panel sorry so on my canvas i'll click the big button here that says add a new animation you guys got to click that and i've called it fade from black once i've got that there i then click on the panel and remember, any property while the animation is, is on will be recorded. So all I did was change the alpha value from all the way up to all the way down. That, that's all that animation is doing, it's going from there to there. Now, if you remember, that will happen automatically. Any animation you create will happen automatically, which is the behavior that we want, but it will also automatically loop, which we don't want. So window, animation and animator if it's not already open here it is and what you'll find is game starts and it runs your animation which in my case was called fade from black i'm going to double click on it and i'm going to turn off loop time because loop time will be on but we don't want it to loop so if you do find that it's um, flickering or anything like that you just need to make sure that loop time is off by double clicking fade from black so that's that first bit which is the really easy bit uh, it's taken me taken me a day to figure out how to do this in a way that's teachable. So, like I said, don't try and follow along. Watch it back once I've explained it. So, the way this works, our loading screens, is if I go to my main menu, my main menu is like any main menu, you may already have one. It contains a canvas, which is a game object, XR, UI canvas, Remember it's under XR. Scaled it down, stuck a panel on it, just like I've done previously. There's some text on it which says scary game, name of the game, and a button, and a button. The button at the top loads the game usually, which just uses scene manager dot load level. And then the button here, the loading screen one, runs a slightly more complicated script, which is what we're going to talk about. So this is nothing special, this is just a regular scene, like anything we've done before. And if you follow my tutorial on UI main menus, it's exactly that. What is different is at the bottom of this, I have a thing called Game Manager. This is just a script on a game object 
that is very, very unexciting. Um, what it does do is it gives it a unique icon. Don't be fooled by the unique icon. It just means whenever you create something and you call it Game Manager, it gives it a unique icon. All it does. So all I did here to create a Game Manager is I right-clicked, created an empty object. I called it Game Manager. I was going to call this Game Manager 2 because I've obviously already got one in my scene. And then we're going to write a script to go on it. Now I've already pre-written this stuff, so I'm just going to talk through it rather than writing it along. But this is what we need in our script. At the very top, we need to be using Unity Engine Management because we're scene management because we're going to be transitioning scenes. And I've also got this line here that we don't need for the basic version of this tutorial, but if you want to do a slightly more advanced version. Uh, which I'll show you at the end, you can include this as well because this introduces a fix for a complex problem that you won't encounter if you follow all the steps I'm going to do for now. But if you do the advanced stuff I'll show at the end, this will introduce a problem. The class is of course called Game Manager because that's the name of our script and remember they've got to match. Then we create a private field. Why is it not say the word private? Because it is private if you don't write anything, if you don't write the word public, it is private, so we don't need to write the word private in. And this is an async operation. We're going to be loading things asynchronously, which means on top of existing scenes before we unload the other one. And we're just calling that operation. And we need a way of keeping a record of how far the load process is. So we're calling it operation. This is our loading operation. And then in the awake method, so remember, when you start a script, you'll get up, start and update. You can delete both of those. And then we're going to replace it with awake, private void awake. And then we've got this instruction, don't destroy on load, game object with a lowercase g. What that is doing is on this game manager object, when I press loading screen, well, you can even see it over here. You see it's in its own little section called don't destroy on load. It puts it in its own scene, that means it will persist between all of my scenes. So you can see I'm on the loading screen, it's still there. You can see I'm in my main, main game, and it's still there. It persists between scenes. That's what that line, don't destroy on load, is doing. I've got a function here for loading the main game, which is what my, my default button is doing, what that regular button is doing to just load the game normally. Un unexciting, just uses loads the game normally. And then this is where the, the magic happens. This is again another function. This is load with loading screen. Calls the scene manager, load scene asynchronously, and it loads the loading screen. Load scene mode dot single. So what this is doing is it's overriding the current scene and unloading it. And then I've got scene manager load scene asynchronously show. What the word show is is here is that's just the name of my my main game. That's my main level. It's called show. Yours might be called main game or level one or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Mine's called show. And then it's going to load scene mode dot additive. That means in addition to the loading screen that is already loaded as well. And then I'm saying the operation. I want to keep a record of this. So operation equals that loading instruction. Then I start a coroutine, capital S, capital C, and the coroutine we're going to start is called load. Load is down here. So just underneath that function, I've got an I enumerator load. That's the function the start coroutine is jumping to. And it's got a while loop. While the operation is not yet done. That's saying it's not loaded yet. So while it's not yet finished the load process, display how far through the progress it's got, how far through the process, yield return null, that means loop through again, loop through again, loop through again, carry on looping until it's finished loading, and then when it has finished loading, unload the loading screen. I've got a commented out bit of code which we don't need to know for now, so if you're just following up to this point, that's basically all you need to know. So I'll just zoom out a little bit so you can kind of see all of that. I don't know if this is useful for you while you're copying. Or we will be copying once you watch this the second time. So this is for you watching it the second time through.
there you go, you can see the awake function, load main game, which you may not want if you're just doing a regular loading screen or whatnot. So what makes this now useful and special? To make your game manager um, have the script on it, we apply it in the way we, we do normally, you can either go to your scripts and apply game manager onto it, that will work, or remember you can add a component of type game manager does, doesn't hurt. I'm going to delete my example one because I've already got one here and you'll notice it's blue, it's blue because it's a prefab. Remember the way to make a prefab is you drag and you drop it down here. Now that just makes it a prefab. I don't actually think you need to make it a prefab in this case but I have done in this example because I've tried a million different things out to make it easy to understand. So this game manager lives in your main menu. When you press any of these buttons, so when I click on the loading screen, the button has got an on-click event, so I'll click the plus to add an on-click event. I've dragged in the game manager, and then I've chosen from the drop-down game manager, and I've chosen load with loading screen. Okay, and that's that's all that's done. It just so happens that this one is calling the load main game function, which is in there as well. What we've now set up is a dependency. Your game will now break if you don't load your game in order. So it's important to remember to have your order set up. You go to File and Build Settings. I've got my main menu is the first thing that loads. I've got my show screen, should probably have my loading screen next. Main menu, loading screen, and show. Remember, it doesn't really matter the order of the rest of your scenes, but the first thing in your build must be the first thing in your build. So in this case, I've got main menu loading first. So whenever you test your game and you want to uh, test it in, in the engine, you've got to make sure that main menu is the first thing you've loaded. You can still test your game by going to your, your, um, your first level or whatever, and you can still press play and it should still, still work. says. There we go, just a very very demanding scene. So this is my main level. Very complex scene, just pulled from the asset store. I'm taking no credit for this one. But remember that if you try and uh, create your game, create your game in order, it's got to, it's got to know work in order. So I think that's everything you need to know. There is one more thing though. The loading screen You'll notice all that is in here is a camera, a standard camera, not an XR origin, not a, not a special camera. It's just a bog standard right click and choose camera, camera. That's all that is in this scene. So you need to create a scene for it. So you create a scene, call it loading screen. And all that's in here is a canvas, same deal as before. This is a world space one. Again, this is a, a canvas made the same way as before. XR, UI canvas, positioned it in front of the camera, put a panel on it, put some text on it that says the word loading. You can put whatever you want on here. Remember you can choose from any of your uh, any of your graphics. You can go on a panel if you want to. Um, you, know, you can put whatever you like, doesn't really matter. Didn't even know some of these were in here. Uh, choose graphics that aren't horrendously pixelated. Icons are not the best choice for this. Getting distracted. There we go. So it's just it's just a graphic. The reason why this is set up the way that it is is we introduce a problem if we go from a scene that's got a XR origin on it to another scene that loads asynchronously with an XR origin on it because the game doesn't know which one to use and it gets confused. So I've got here a nice standard camera and this is imperfect and this is why I'm not hugely happy with it because when you are in the game for the main menu I can look around, turn my head, turn my controllers and I can go to the loading screen but I turn my head here and it just follows me, which is not brilliant, not perfect. But then when I return to the actual main game, the game called Show, it'll, it'll work perfectly. The reason why there's a problem is there's a bit of overlap. 
there's an overlap between the loading screen being loaded and then the game being loaded. And you can see that's reflected by this error message down here saying there are two audio listeners in the scene because for a moment there are two cameras existing in the same scene, which is not something that we want. And when I tested this with an XR origin, the two conflicted and it didn't give control to the, the one in the game, which is not ideal. So we've got our loading screen, we've got our game, and that's effectively all there is to it. So if I just go through this logic one more time, we are using scene management and Unity engine.xr interaction.toolkit.input. We'll need that in a second if you want to follow along. We've got an async operation called operation. On awake, we don't destroy on load. We've got a function for loading the game, but you may not need that in your game. If you're doing it with the loading screen, you'll have something that looks like this. When we load with the loading screen, tell the scene manager to load the scene asynchronously, load the loading screen, and load that singly, and then load the scene asynchronously, whatever your main game is called. Start the coroutine, and the coroutine will cycle through um, however long it takes to load your game. And in this case, the debug.log message is just outputting how far the progress has gone. You'll notice on our main menu, we could put sliders on there to say how much is loaded. We could say what it's currently doing. We could do all sorts of more complex stuff, but that's beyond the scope of today's tutorial, basically. And then remember, once that has finished, then we unload the loading screen. So that all works, that's, that's fine. You could stop there and test it and, uh, and try and build your own. That'll work okay. However, if you want to take it one step further, our loading screen currently is a bit naff. And our loading screen is a bit naff because it's got a standard camera in it, so the player can't look around. So if I replace that camera with an XR origin using VR, that has everything we need included. It's got an interaction manager, it's got this blasted input action manager, which you sometimes see me hastily add to people's code. And if I just reset the position of the camera, we should have a decent, decent view. So let me just explain to you the problem that we have if we if we introduce this, this solution. I'm going to pop the headset back on and I'm going to do loading screen. And I can now look around, which is quite nice. I've still got the controllers. This is a much better loading screen. Feels much better, feels much more VR. But then if I'm in the game, oh no, it hasn't given control back to me and it's not detecting my inputs, I'm turning my head. It's not actually showing you anything at all, is it? I've just taken the headset off. So I'm turning my head and it's not detecting anything, which is what, what you can see here. It's not detecting any of my input. There is a fix, but it's a dodgy, dirty fix. The dirty fix is when you have finished loading, so well, this is in the coroutine called load, we start an additional coroutine, which is called fix player. And this is the bit at the bottom I hadn't included earlier. So this, um, God, this is an ugly fix. Basically what this does is it turns the input action manager off for a moment. So that is the bit in the game on the XR origin. this input action manager here. So let me sh let me show you why this fixes stuff. So if I load, this, load the game, I get a nice loading screen, really nice, feels pretty good. I can look around, very nice. Then I get into the game uh, and it has now fixed itself. And the reason why it's fixed itself is it's now running that fix I've introduced because what it basically did is it went to the XR origin and it turned the input action manager off. So you see that that's broken just like it was before and then turns it back on again. So it gives control back to uh, what should be the player. We do get a bunch of errors though and uh, it, it works. It, it works, but it's not an ideal fix. So what it does is it goes and finds the player um, assuming that your XR origin in your scene has a tag of player, if not, it's to have a tag of player. 
and then we get the input action manager from it. That's why we needed this input up here when we were using the interaction toolkits, not inputs, otherwise this won't appear. So we go and get the input action manager, which we reference and we, we store and we call it player. Then we tell the player to disable that component, wait for one one hundredth of a second, and then turn it back on, which should be enough time for it to do what it needs to do to finish unloading uh, the old scene, which is what's giving us JIP. So that works, but again you can see it was imperfect, so I'll show you one, one last problem with it. So you may have spotted it if you're paying close attention earlier, but here we go, loading screen, very nice. Wave of controls around, very nice and great. But notice as the game loads, notice what direction my ray interactors are doing. So my controllers are getting picked up, but my ray interactors are pointing the wrong direction until I touch the thumbsticks and then the inputs have responded correctly. So it depends on if you can put up with that as a as an ugly solution. You will notice one additional problem. I think I was just seeing it there, was I? Because we've got this nice fade, this camera in front of us, the ray interactor is, I think, interacting with it. So you can see the right ray interactor, I think it's just touching um, the screen. So what I mean by screen is that canvas that was in front of us. So you may find the animator you would want to turn the object off as well. But, you know, it works. So there you go. Those, uh, that works. I recommend just following the basic approach. But if you do want that VR effect uh, in your main menu, in your loading screen, um, that's a fix you can apply. So I'll just leave that back on there for a second and just explain it. So during the loading process, when it's um, when you've told it to unload the loading screen, call the coroutine to fix the player, go get the input action manager on the player, disable it, wait a moment, and then enable it. The reason why we have to wait a moment is turning something off and then on again doesn't get processed until the end of the frame, so it'll just basically be treated as if you turned it on and it will ignore the off instruction. I think that's basically everything we need to know. Um, let me know if it works for you. Give me a shout if it doesn't. But obviously you can see how you can make these loading screens really quite nice if you want to. Okay, thank you.